Thank you for calling Cell Scripter. How can I help you? Oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, this is with. Uh, does that name sound familiar by any chance? No. Okay, <laughs> not a worry. Um, so I'm a commercial real estate advisor, um, and I've been doing some work near you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're still on Briar Forest. Uh, regarding what? Oh yeah, commercial real estate. Um, so I've I've been helping out some people, and I just wanted to ask you a couple questions if if the timing's okay. If you're not too busy. Oh, okay. All right, sweet. So I've been finding that a lot of people have been uh, pretty frustrated that they're stuck in these long-term leases and uh, their rent started off high, but you know, it's really driven rental prices down or their landlords haven't been really willing to work with them. Um, or, you know, that they've uh, had to big, have been doing like these big restructurings. Due to and I was just curious that that's not happening with y'all. Is it not really? No. Okay, cool. Um, so has but has it driven your business down? Has it has it maintained? Are you guys like expanding, reducing? We haven't really been anything? impacted at all. Oh wow, that's awesome. And your landlord's been really helpful with with everything. Do you negotiate like personally with your landlord? I mean, everything's fine. Okay. All right. Well, um, that's all I I really wanted to ask you today. Um, you know, this, that's most of the stuff I was just really curious about. So um, thanks. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to see with me, Michael. All right. Appreciate All right. it. You have a great one. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So what sounds like maybe a not-so-great cold call example, there's actually some really good stuff in there. So let's talk about what he did well, what he could have done better, and then actually turn all that into a recommended cold call script that he could have used to possibly have a better result with this call. So let's just kind of go through his call, starting with the introduction. He asks me if his company sounds familiar. I would just remove that real quick. Just assume that the prospect knows who you are. Or there's no real reason to validate that. He mentions that he's a real estate advisor. I would eliminate explaining your role in an organization. The prospect does not really care about what your title is, what your role is. If anything, that makes you sound more like a salesperson trying to sell something, and that will trigger more guardedness. What you really need to focus on is how you can help the prospect. He asks a qualifying question in the introduction of, are you still at this address? While I do think that is probably a very good question for a commercial real estate agent to ask, there's a better time. In this review, I'm actually going to outline the questions that I would recommend he asks, and we'll put that together into a cold call script towards the end. And then he asks if the timing is okay, if you aren't too busy. I think this is actually a good thing to do. I recommend in your cold calls to confirm that the prospect's available. I think it's a really good way to establish rapport, confirm that you have a couple minutes to work with. I think there's a better way to do that, and I'll show that in the cold call script example at the end. Then he jumps real quick to explaining pain points here in the in his cold call. I think this is a very good thing to do. He basically started the call by saying, you know, a lot of people I work with are, are frustrated by this and that. And what he uses, he uses some changes in the basically in the environment that we're operating in, and he tries to establish pain points points around that. I think this is really good. I think we can make some small changes to how he does this to improve his cold call script. Then he does get to asking some questions. I think this is good. He basically is trying to establish a reason for us talking in more detail. That is a great approach. I think his questions are not strong or they're a little misguided. So we will fine tune those here in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're going to take what he gave us to work with and we're going to create what I call building blocks. So there's a building building block for the value that you have to offer, the pain points you can make go away, questions to ask, maybe a customer example name drop building block, a product build, building block, which is ba basically this is what I sell. And once you organize all of those thoughts into building blocks, you can then use those building blocks to create a cold call script, create a meeting script, voicemail script. Here's just a really quick introduction. Hello, Michael, this is so-and-so from and then mention your organization. Have I caught you in the middle of anything? So I like asking, have I caught you in the middle of anything instead of what he did, which is he said, are you too busy? Or if you are if you have a couple of minutes, here is a pain points building block that I've created based on what he shared. You know, if you kind of listen to what he talked about, he's basically trying to state the environment has changed. changed. 
the rates have changed. Are you, you know, has anything changed with you? You want everything you say to be really digestible over the phone. So you want to use as few words as possible. The words you use, you want the points that you're making to be as clear as possible. And for someone to understand really quickly what you're talking about, you know, he asked some questions. I think his questions weren't strong. Really to give you advice and making strong questions for you, I think that the real easy thing that you can do is you can create what I call pain questions. And so this is if you have a list of pain points that you can help make go away for each pain point, you can then create a question or two. And here is a list of questions that I easily, you know, derived from the list of pain points that I created for him. Now, it's not just pain points, questions that you should ask for anything that you sell. There are what I call current state questions. So these are questions that basically try to figure out what is the prospect doing in the area that you have something to offer. So if we look at selling cars, the current state questions for a car salesperson would be, what are you driving today? What year is it? How many miles do you have? How is it running? How often do you currently replace it? Where you ask those could be debated. Depending on what you sell, you might want to go straight to your current state questions, or you may want to start with your pain questions. That's on a case-by-case -case basis. And depending on where the call goes, you may start out with pain questions and then go to current state questions. I basically created some value points for what he sells. Now, I don't know if these are correct or not, but I got to a list of benefits that he has to offer because for each pain point, there is a, a benefit that you have to offer. The benefits and the pain points are kind of like a yin and a yang inverse relationship. So if you know the benefits that you offer, you can create a list of basically opposite pain points that your product or service can make go away. In this case, we start out with the pain points and we just basically created this list of opposite benefits and op opposite value points. And here are is a product building block, which basically is this is who I'm with. This is what we do. Everybody kind of, you know, can explain what, what they sell and who they're with. One step that I recommend you go above that is to explain how you're different. And here's a name drop example. We actually worked with another tenant in your building. We found that they had unused office space and, and whatnot. So here's a customer example. Now, once you have all that, then those, what I just went through there are what I would call building blocks. And we can use all that to create a call script. Now, let me share the call script with you. So here's the intro. Have I caught you in in the middle of anything great the reason why I'm, I'm calling is i help small businesses to develop their short and long-term strategy grow or shrink their space uh, footprint according to their needs make sure they're not overpaying for office space i don't know if we can create these improvements for you so i had a question or two how much of a priority is it for you to decrease or increase your office space so here are some of the questions that basically try to understand do i have pain points so what we're doing different here is that we're asking pain questions instead of just giving the pain points and saying, do you have any of those, which that takes you to a yes or no scenario. Here we're asking some questions, hopefully getting a conversation going and identifying how things are going. Depending on how those questions go, here are some current state questions. Are you still located at? Do you currently own, rent or own? How well are, does your current space meet your needs? And based on what just happened there, may, hopefully we asked some questions that got the person to say, yeah, things could be better or that's a concern. And then you can go for the close and say, oh, well, we should probably talk in more detail. But if those questions don't get you going in the right direction, you could then share some pain points and say, well, you know, I tell you what, the reason why I'm calling is a lot of businesses that we work with, they're having this pain, this pain, this pain. Are you concerned about any of those? So that's basically really your fallback position. He basically opened up with that. You know, this is what's going on. Are you concerned about any of those? So hopefully in some some of those steps of your cold call script, you basically identify that it might make sense to talk based on their needs or based on their responses. And then that's where you can start to close for talking more in more detail. And that's where you can say something like, oh, well, you know, based on what you shared, it might make sense to talk in more detail. The reason why is I'm with this company and we basically provide commercial real estate advisory services. We help clients to find new space. We also help clients to rent out their space. 
provide tenant representation, management services. Some ways we're different from other commercial real estate agencies out there is that we have existing relationships with all the major buildings in the city. We have a legal team that's skilled at getting out of current leases, which is good for the environment we're in today. We have the best marketing strategies in the market. A quick example, we actually worked with a tenant in your building. They had a lot of unused space because of the current environment that we're working in. And we actually helped them to renegotiate their agreement to not only get a better rate per square foot, but also we helped them to decrease the amount of space that was in their agreement. But you know, I've called you out of the blue. I'm not sure if this is the best time to talk about this. Are you available for a brief 15 to 20 minute meeting where I can share some examples of how we've helped other tenants to shrink their current agreement or grow their space depending on their needs? Are you available next Tuesday or Thursday morning? Or we could talk, keep talking about this right now if you're free for another 10, 15, 20 minutes. So that's the close. So that's basically just taking everything he gave us and putting it into a better flow, tighter message, uh, better questions, and, and that should have taken him to a better place. Now, one last thing I want to talk to you about is that I gave him a couple objections, and we could certainly improve how he responded to those objections. So one of the objections I, that came up real early was I asked, well, what is this in regards to? And he basically said, commercial real estate, I've been helping out some people. When someone says, what's this in regards to? They're basically trying to identify, are you, well, what's what's going on? Are you a salesperson? Are you about to try to sell to me? This is a challenging objection, by the way. But one thing that you can do is you can just go back to a, a section in your call script, which is your value points. So when someone says, what's this in regards to? Well, you can say, well, the reason for the call is we help business owners to develop their short and long-term real estate strategy. Another objection that came up is I basically said everything's fine, which is something that you'll run into, which is someone says, I'm not interested or we don't need anything or we're not making any changes right now. Well, what he basically said is, oh, okay, all right. That's all I wanted to ask you today. That's most of the stuff I was curious about. So he basically conceded when I said everything's fine. Now, at some point, you do need to concede and move on to try to reach better prospects. But let's talk about how he could respond to this. So if he's just trying to keep the conversation going, he could try to respond by asking some questions. Oh, I understand. Uh, if I could ask you real quick, how much of a hassle is it for you dealing with your landlord? Now, so he could go back up to the script when he gets the, I'm just, we're not making any changes right now, and ask questions. That's a great way to keep the conversation going. Now, if he's already asked all of his questions or we've been talking for a while, he might not be able to go back up to that. Now, one thing that you can do is you can try to close and close in a way that you're focusing back on the sales process that you're trying to take the prospect through. The sales process that you should go through for really selling anything is, is you start with an interaction and that's where we're at. That's where this guy was at on this call example. The next step is to have a conversation. While we were talking right real quick, the next step is to have a real conversation where both parties are listening and there and agree to be there. And then at some point after that is an explanation. This is an explanation of what he does, how he can help and whatnot. What he was basically doing is he was trying to identify in this interaction, do you need what I sell? I, I'm a commercial real estate agent. You know, are you struggling in these areas? Do you need an, what I sell enough to for me to explain to you how I can solve your problems? I didn't have any problems, so that really did not go anywhere. But the reality is, is that he could have focused more on just trying to sell the conversation. If things are okay, or if I'm not looking to make a change, that might be a valid reason for him to not explain to me how he can help because I don't need anything. But there could still be a reason for us to have a conversation. You could redirect back to the close. You can basically try to close for the next step, even though the prospect says everything's fine by saying something like, oh, I understand. Uh, well, it sounds like things are pretty good over there. Even though you're not needing to make a change today, I'd still be very interested in having a brief conversation with you and we can share some examples of how we're helping other businesses to, and then you could insert some value. Are you open to a brief intro conversation? That way, when you get closer to needing to make a change, you can know who we are and how we can help, and you won't have to try to figure out who is a good advisor at that particular moment. So whether or not that's the right wording right there, this is basically, they're saying everything's fine, and you're basic, and you're saying, I understand. Let, you know, is there still an opportunity for us to have a brief conversation? And that is a response that you can use when they say, we don't have any budget right now, we're not making any changes, we're currently locked into a contract. You're basically letting them know that, that you're aware that they're not going to buy anything and you're not trying to sell them anything. You're just trying to sell them on having a brief conversation. So I hope you can take some of those ideas of what he could have done better and apply those to your calls. 
if this has helped you in any way, given you any ideas or tips that you might be able to apply to what you're doing, and that helps you, you could return the favor by liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing to our channel. That helps us tremendously. doesn't cost you anything. Uh, please follow us on any of these social platforms. We are trying to publish sales tips every day. So instead of these long videos that you'll find on YouTube, we're stripping these down to 30 to 60 second sales tips and posting those daily on all of these platforms. So be sure to follow us to get our daily sales tips. If you want more information on how the smart sales system can help you, basically all these tips that I gave you here today are part of the smart sales system. And if you want to figure out how these tips can help you more, uh, basically smart stands for sales messaging and response tactics. And as you can see here today, basically we're, we were going about trying to improve his cold call, his cold call script by improving his sales messaging and his responses. And that's all part of the smart sales system, which is all outlined in the book, the smart sales system. And you can get a copy of that book here. If you're not ready to buy the book or you don't want to spend any money, you can actually access all of the Smart Sales System on YouTube for free. Uh, there's a video for every chapter in the book. And the reason why we give away the smart, our methodology and our training for free on YouTube is because our business model is to sell our software platform called Sales Scripter, which basically aligns with the Smart Sales System. So if you like the Smart Sales System and you want to implement the Smart Sales System, you could certainly do that with a Microsoft Word set with a set of Microsoft Word documents and spreadsheets. But if you really want to do it right, you'll save a lot of time and do it a lot better by using the Sales Scripter platform, which actually has a sales message builder in it. And when you build your sales message in Sales Scripter, uh, it'll use your your message to fill up a library of scripts and emails. And uh, there's also ER CRM functionality, email automation. And the third leg of this three-legged stool of the smart sales system is professional services. And we can certainly work with you in a on a consulting or coaching basis to help you to create your script, uh, create your message, create your strategy and whatnot. So definitely available to help you there. And if you want any more information on any of that, go to salescriptor.com. Hope this helps and happy hunting. Okay.